George Hammond, and this is my wife, Mary. Well, welcome to our 200th cruise. Thank you. Half tractor will travel. George is a tractor salesman. <laughs> Best in his district. They call him the Lee Iacocca of the Corn Belt. Excuse me, Judy, Andy Warhol's here. <gasps> Andy Warhol? Well, you know the artist. He's going to be on this cruise? Yes, he's going to help us celebrate our 200th voyage. He's going to pick some lucky passenger and paint a portrait. <laughs> Romaine, your executive assistant. I've read all about you. Welcome to our 200th cruise, Mr. Warhol. Uh, you and your party are on the promenade deck. I'll show you the way. I was wondering, how does an artist know when a painting is truly successful? When the check's cleared. <laughs> Here. Excuse me. You are such a lovely vision. Would you mind if Andy photographed you? Oh, thank you, sir. Mrs. Hammond, is that you? Is something wrong? I want to talk about it. But I just can't. Mrs. Hammond, you look so sad. If you don't talk to someone, you're going to ruin your whole cruise. You don't know anybody in Colby, Kansas, do you? You never planned to visit Colby. Well, the surrounding communities of Hoxie, Selden, Sharon Springs. This is him, and I promise the ship never goes to Kansas, ever. I don't want to read a word of this to anybody, especially my husband. Oh, I've just got to talk to somebody. Of course you do. I used to live in New York City. <laughs> yeah, we all make mistakes. Years ago, I got into my head that I could be an actress. And I took off for New York, and I was going to be somebody. And I got lucky. Andy Warhol discovered me. It was like a dream come true. I changed my name to Marina Del Rey. Everywhere I went, I was the center of attention. Of course, my green hair might have helped. I even appeared in one of Andy's movies, White Giraffe. Did you see it? No. I saw my Christmas. Uh, Bing wouldn't have been in this one. It was about a bunch of people watch TV. And that was it. They watched TV. And then on top of the TV set, there was a statue of a white giraffe. You became a star by watching TV. No, I was the star. In fact, I didn't come on until the end, right after The Price is Right. Oh. All my days with Andy were fun while I lasted. And then... When it stopped being fun, I just went home to Colby and married George. And you never told him that you'd been in the picture? Oh, no. He's a really dear, sweet man, but he's very conservative. You know that he threw away his album of The Sound of Music when Julie Andrews took off her blouse in that movie, S.O.B.? I never, ever understand my days in New York. Oh, that's why you've been so upset. Yes. George is up for president of our local Rotary. You might say it was his lifelong dream. If word got back to Colby about my past, he'd just be a laughingstock. I don't want to do if Andy recognized me. Oh, would you look this way? <laughs> he didn't recognize me. See, you had nothing to worry about. He didn't recognize me. That's the man who dyed my hair green. He dressed me in food labels. <laughs> Recognize me. But, well, maybe you've changed a little bit since then. Maybe I've changed too much. Sorry, I'm late. What have you 
done to yourself? Well, you know, I, I haven't changed my hair in 15 years. I, I just thought it was time for a change. I hate it. Oh, no, I don't hate it. It's just that I'm, I'm not used to it, that's all. Is that all you can say? Of course not. Well? I'll bet that dress weighs a ton. <laughs> You know something, hon? I'm beginning to like that new look of yours. Thank you, George. You know, I've been thinking, we're, we're just stuck in a middle-age, middle-class, middle-American rut. What do you mean, stuck? I'm about to become president of the Colby Rotary Club. A job not without its perks. We'll get to sit right up front at the pancake breakfast. We never do anything different. Oh, now, wait a minute. We're doing something different right now, aren't we? I mean, we're on this cruise. That's because you wanted it at the office, George. If you hadn't sold the most tractors of anybody in Colby County, we'd just have our vacation like we always do. Crappie fishing on Lake Fister. <laughs> oh, thank you. Isn't that nice? You know something, sweetheart? You're right. We are in a rut. And starting tonight, we're breaking out. After dinner, we'll go dancing, then hit the casino and take in a movie, you know? And maybe we'll stay up for the midnight buffet. And then we'll go back to our cabin and stay up for the early bird breakfast. <laughs> You know what I mean? Oh. 24 black. <laughs> this is fun, isn't this? Fun. Fun? You know, it might be more fun if we bet some money. <laughs> Look at the time. You know, if we don't hurry, we're going to be late for the movie. Okay. Uh, what's playing? Oh, some nature flick called White Giraffe. Uh, the same guy who made it is on his cruise. <laughs> On second thought, George, I'm tired. Let's go to bed. Well, what about rock busting? Kicking up our heels, being wild and crazy guys. We can go back to the cabin, take a nap for two hours, and then we can be wild and crazy guys. Well, it's only 10 o'clock. Let's go to the movie. 19 red. Well, come on, George. We're going to miss the movie. Well, I love nature films. You remember Born Free, that Elsa the Lion? What an actress! <laughs> Green hair. You know, the worst part was having to wear the wax lips for so long. <laughs> Tell me, what did your husband say about the movie? Nothing. He just went back to the cabin and went to sleep. Then everything's okay. No, you don't know George. When he's mad at me, that's what he does. He sleeps. Well, I better take the giraffe by the horns. <laughs> George, I don't want to wake you. Oh, sorry, I overslept. Well, that's all right. Uh, about the movie. I know, it must have been a terrible shock to you. Damn right it was. I mean, here I was expecting animals. I get some Looney Tune picture about people watching TV. I didn't know what I was doing. Well, of course you did. You were the one who didn't want to go. I should have listened to you. Anyhow, I owe you an apology. You do? For what? For falling asleep at the movie. I tried to be a wild and crazy guy, but I just couldn't keep my eyes open. Oh, George! That's wonderful. You mean you're not mad because we didn't stay up partying all night? Oh, George, we can party any night. And we will, tonight. I promise. We'll even stay up for the midnight buffet. Oh, George. You have made me the happiest woman in the world. Mm. <laughs> Boy, that must be some buffet. <laughs>
tell George the truth about her past. Hmm. Well, it looks like he took it pretty well. What? You were one of those? <laughs> green hair. Well, honey, it was more of a, like a minty moss. From a distance, it looked almost blonde. And he wants to paint your picture? <laughs> Over my dead body. Well, honey, you know, this is a really big event that's going to be in the paper and everything. I look on it as a real big honor. And I look on it as a disgrace. No way a wife of mine is going to have a picture painted by, by that New York flake ball. I can just imagine what the folks back home would say. And how are you going to explain this to our son, huh? Well, I'm sure Chuck will understand. Your reputation will be ruined. Don't you mean your reputation will be ruined? I was right about you, George. You're nothing but a narrow-minded stuff short! Can I talk to you, Mr. Warhol? Excuse us. Uh, Mr. Warhol, I'm Mary's husband. Mary? Marina Del Rey. Oh. <laughs> Mary tells me that you want to paint her picture. Well, that's impossible. Uh, it's nothing personal, Mr. Warhol. It's, it's just that we come from two different worlds. And uh, don't get me wrong, I'm flexible. I mean, I could even go for something like that. If you could do that sort of thing, it would be a different story. Well, that's mine. No kidding. That's good. Thanks. <laughs> George, I know how hard this has been on you. Listen, Mary. I, I told Mr. Warhol that he couldn't paint your portrait. And then I got to see some of the other work that he's done, and I started thinking, well, Norman Rockwell is dead, and he's probably the only other guy who can do you justice. Well, what will the Rotary think? Well, Fritz Ellison's wife once posed for an auto parts ad in a swimsuit. And uh, he served two terms in office, so I'll take the gamble. Oh, no, George. I have another confession to make. Oh, Mary, please. I'm just so glad I married you. Oh. <laughs> Come on, let's get back to the fire, man. I just want to say how honored I am that you chose my wife, Mary, to be the subject of your portrait. Maybe you two would like to get together with us here in L.A. Oh, Andy, we can't. We're not getting off the ship. We've booked passage on the very next cruise. But you've already seen the sights. Hardly be worth getting out of bed. Exactly. <laughs>